Good morning, everyone. My name is Scott Nishimoto. I'm the Executive Director of Seeds of Peace. Thank you all for being here bright and early on a Saturday morning. Welcome to the first of five public webinars in a series we're calling Designing a Stronger Tomorrow. I think nearly all of us will agree that 2020 has been an extremely hectic and extremely difficult year for a lot of us. Um, there's been a global pandemic. There's been fierce division politically, racially, culturally, environmentally. Lives have been lost, livelihoods have been lost, but we feel that as difficult as 2020 has been, it's also been a moment of opportunity. And maybe it's this feeling of opportunity and hope that brought us all together here today. We've come together to search for some inspiration, maybe some tools, maybe some direction on how to start designing a stronger tomorrow, hence the name of our, our webinar series. Well, there's much to celebrate today, um, and for some, much to mourn over and much to be uncertain over, one thing is certain for me personally, now the work begins, right? So here at Peace, we believe that peace is action. It's a little more than just a feeling. It's more than just something you study. It's more complicated than simply saying there shall be no wars and no violence. It's action to build peace within ourselves, to build peace with others, um, and to build peace through service to the community. And Maya and Carrie will explain a little bit more in their presentation. Before I introduce our speakers for the morning, I'd like to send a big mahalo to our partners. We have the Nale Aloha Foundation. Feel free to clap. I think in person we can all clap, but you can do so virtually. Um, the Nale Aloha Foundation, who graciously funded this series, um, as well as the Institute for Climate and Peace, the Matsunaga Institute for Peace, um, for being our partners in this venture. And just to let you all know, this session is also being live streamed on the Facebook pages of the 100th Infantry Battalion Veterans Education Center, the Conflict Resolution Alliance, KTUH Honolulu, the Institute for Climate and Peace, Matsunaga Institute for Peace, Real, Innovate, Real Innovative Connections, East-West Center Leadership Programs, and our platform, the Seeds of Peace platform. Okay. So now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our speakers for the morning. We have Dr. Kerry Urosevich and Dr. Maya, Maya Satoro. Kerry is the lead for network design and innovation for Hawaii's early childhood action strategy. She previously served in both Governor Abercrombie's and Governor Ige's administration within the Executive Office on Early Learning. She's a member of the prestigious Omidyar Fellows Program. She's an affiliate faculty at the Matsunaga Institute for Peace and she's a parent of three children who ground her in all of her work. Maya is a consultant to the Obama Foundation, working to develop programming in the Asia Pacific region. She's the former director of the Matsunaga Institute for Peace. She's a teacher, she's an author, and she's the recent co-founder of the Institute for Climate and Peace and the Peace Studio. Together, Carrie and Maya co-founded Seeds of Peace. And I just wanna you know, finally say that on a personal level, they become two of my most trusted teachers and mentors, um, not only professionally, but also as parents and as neighbors and just as fellow humans. So I'm very, very thankful to have both of them um, as, as big parts of my life. So with that said, please welcome Dr. Maya Satoro and Dr. Kerry Urosevich. Mahalo, Scott, and mahalo. Uh, Nui, to all who are in attendance today, uh, Scott, you are one of our favorite people. We cherish you. And many of you who are um, here with us today uh, are our beloved community and um, our teachers, our guides, our inspiration. Thank you for taking the time uh, to be with us today. Uh, we know that there are many things that you could be doing. Uh, and we hope that you receive a little more courage, some um, encouragement and some inspiration, uh, some new ideas, uh, resources and connection um, as a result of your commitment to being with us today. Carrie, um, would you please offer some, some words of welcome? I sure will. Welcome, everybody, and thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, we appreciate this is a, a monumental day, and we're all being pulled in other directions, and so uh, really um, deep gratitude uh, for spending the hour with us today um, and this afternoon. So we wanted to start with what is called the big welcome, 
Um, and the big welcome was a message that was shared in an Omidyar Fellows session that really spoke uh, to all of us. And so we'll, we'll start today um, with these words. I'm so honored to welcome you all here to our first of five Seed Saturdays. Um, take a moment right now to allow yourself to fully arrive. Allow the dust to settle in your mind. Bring your attention to your body, your breath, this present moment. You have arrived. Welcome. We welcome your excitement and your trepidation, your clear inquiries and your big questions mark faces. We welcome your wide eyes and open hearts right alongside your side eyes and cynicism and skepticism. You are welcome here. Your culture is welcome. Your ethnic origin is welcome. Your race, your skin hue, accent, food preferences, and all of the complexities that make up your cultural identity are welcome here. The histories, first stories, and experiences of your ancestors are honored and welcomed. We welcome you with all of the connections you bring with you to the children in your lives, your partners, siblings, parents, the animals in your lives, and other loved ones in your communities. You are welcome here. We welcome your spiritual practice, your religious affiliation, your spiritual walk. However you hold that aspect of your life is welcomed. Your love is welcome here. How you love, who you love, and your understanding of what love is are all welcome. We welcome you in all of the ways your sexuality has and is unfolding. We welcome you in all of the ways your gender has and is unfolding. We welcome you in your ignorance. We welcome you in your privilege. We welcome you in your grief. We welcome you in your guilt and shame. You are welcome here. Your quirks and ambiguities are welcome. We welcome your humor and we welcome your silent contemplation. We welcome the parts of yourself that you're still figuring out. We welcome you in your roles as entrepreneurs, activists, healers, feelers, intuitives, parents, caretakers, students, artists, change agents, magicians, educators, and warriors. We welcome you at whatever level of mental and physical wellness you are currently functioning. We welcome your introversion and your extroversion. We welcome all of the experiences that led you to this moment. Thank you for surviving. We welcome your wounds and scars, your emotions, all of them are welcome as well. You are welcome here. Thank you for bringing your ancestors with you. We welcome them. We welcome your sacred connections to the lands on which you were conceived, the lands that hosted your birth, and the lands of your ancestors, the lands that we are standing on upon all in life that came before us, the animals, the indigenous peoples of this land, the name, the indigenous peoples that inhabit inhabited the lands where you are. We welcome you to this land here where we have prepped the soil for you to sow the seeds of your leadership visions. Let your roots sink into this nutrient dense soil, intertwining with the roots of everyone else here and connecting to the root systems of all other living things around here as we collectively build our capacity to lead change. Settle in and welcome. Mahalo and, and, and uh, thank you for sharing with us your water and your earth, um, as well as the current space in which uh, you are breathing. I am um, going to ask you now to put in chat one quality, one characteristic of, of, of leadership, of being human that you want to lift up today in this next hour. What is some um, character, trait, or um, ethical or, or moral quality that you want to lift up uh, in this next hour. Thank you. So we are um, a organization that works with a 360 degree approach to raising peace building leaders. And what that means is we try to connect school, community, educators, and family. Um, and I, I mentioned educators and school in two separate spaces because we know that so much education takes place in place um, and outside of the four walls of the school. Uh, we also 
want all of you to think of yourselves as peace building leaders and that requires that you begin to take action to know your own strength uh, your capacity to impact your community your world and the lives of keiki um, lives of children here in hawaii and indeed all over the world and wherever you may be I'd like to, before we move on to the next slide, just read a few of your answers here. Compassion, humility, empathy, unification, hope, truth, purpose, kindness, healing, uh, safety, vulnerability, um, and uh, inner peace and, and, and respectful connections. I think that uh, these are all things that uh, to which we are all entitled, that are universal needs, and I hope that we um, approach them uh, in the next hour in new ways. Okay, next slide. So what do we mean by peace building? Uh, you know, we talk a lot about peace being action, uh, and we always want to distinguish between um, peacemaking uh, and peace building, right? And peacemaking is um, when we work on stopping a conflict. Peace building is what we do once that conflict subsides and we build. Um, and it's hard, right? It requires values and goals um, and um, human rights and needs. It's founded on an ethical, um, of ethics of interdependence and partnership and relationship skills. It creates safe spaces where people interact in new ways um, and expands experiences and honing new means of communication. And again, it's, it's daily action. Um, and it's how we show up. It heals trauma, it promotes justice, and it transforms relationships. And it's hard, and it's intentional. So today's goals are to inspire hope and action. Um, it's to bring together families and community members and all of you to learn strategies for raising peace building leaders. It's to reframe the work that you are all engaged in and currently doing with the concept of peace building in mind. Um, to understand the action-centered approach to peace building, and to learn three concrete tools um, for peace building. You know, our workshops, we usually have five workshops over a course of time where we teach multiple tools. Um, today, to, within the one hour, um, we will focus on just three. Our formula or algorithm for peace building is um, building peace with self, with others, and in community. Another way to frame that is peace within, between, and in service to others. Um, these are our seven seeds, uh, critical thinking and courage, um, are the two that we focus on in terms of personal peace with self. Conflict resolution and compassion are the ones that we focus on with others. And in community, we look at commitment, collaboration, and kind of our um, overall C is connection. Um, there are many other C's uh, like creativity and, and uh, curiosity, and uh, we welcome those. Um, but we want to make sure that you have um, a framework to consider how you are building peace in all three of these categories. This is important because if we have courage, but we don't have compassion, we are dangerous um, and aggressive. If we have compassion without courage, then um, our compassion can be ineffectual because we don't uh, know how to be upstanders and to utilize our skills and our voice um, to move forward and act on that compassionate care. And just to share, these, these seeds um, were created. Maya and I sat down actually at Panya restaurant, um, and these came up on the back of napkins uh, with the framing question of, of all of the peace builders that we admire um, globally, uh, nationally, and locally, what are the skill sets that they've really honed? Um, and we brainstormed a, a broad list, and we came up with um, a lot of attributes and skills, and 32 of those started with the letter C. Um, so we, we thought we should probably narrow it down uh, and not have a 32 word algorithm. Um, and so we recognize that there's a lot of other critical skills related to this work. 
It is really important that in addition to thinking about the connection between peace within, between and in service to others, that we are also looking at the connection between environments, as I mentioned. Um, you know, how are caretakers engaging in nonviolent communication? How are parents, siblings, and grandparents uh, learning the skills of creative conflict transformation? How are faith leaders being inclusive or medical professionals being intersectional and holistic in their treatment and in their care? How are human service um, providers uh, displaying moral courage um, and, and police officers managing their anger? How are uh, community organizations focused on positive peace building instead of simply reactive? And how are counselors engaged in um, compassionate mindfulness? The point is that every single person, all of you and everyone in our communities has a place to enter the stream, a role to play. And so we hope that um, we can begin to connect all of these peace building leaders um, with uh, their new um, feelings of, of confidence and intentionality about um, what needs to happen moving forward in our community here in Hawaii and then in the country um, that is undergoing enormous change and in our world that is struggling with uh, pandemic conflict and many other problems. Um, we know that um, there is only so much perhaps that we can do to impact say nuclear proliferation in North Korea, but there is so much that we can do uh, to impact those around us, uh, our organizations, our um, educational systems, our families, and um, our, our beloved community. So we just wanted to share, here's, here are some of the big efforts that SEEDS has underway. Uh, we do community peace building workshops. Um, so stay on the lookout uh, for those. Uh, Scott does a really great job of communicating out. And if you're not on our email list, um, you will be now. Um, so please look for those. We have youth peace building workshops. Um, we have girls talk back and youth talk back um, and loop leaders programs. And we have community presentations that we do throughout the year. Um, all of our work through Seeds of Peace aligns with the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. And so every action plan that comes out of Seeds of Peace um, tags to at least one, uh, oftentimes multiple um, goals within the STGs. And when, how does this work start? When does it start? Um, and I always, we always like to say it starts prenatally um, and it starts with the relationships in the home. And so um, I just wanted to highlight, if you look at a, a baby's brain um, and you look at the synapses at birth, and then you look at the synapses by the time the child is six years old, look at all those synapses. Um, our goal as humans is to retain as many of those synapses um, as we possibly can. And so by providing as much love and um, a safe and nurturing home and um, you know, economic stability and housing and all of those things that are so critical to thriving uh, for our little ones, it starts, it starts from birth. Um, look at the pruning that happens by 14 years old. Um, and, you, and you can imagine as we go on. So those first five years are really critical. Um, and what we're seeing, I think, with shifting trends in education is really exciting. Um, I'm incredibly hopeful for the future because our education system and, and, and all those that educate outside of our education system is shifting um, in terms of making sure that our kids um, and our kiki have capacity around self-confidence, positive attitudes towards schools, social behaviors, um, decreased aggression. These are all outcomes of a, a deeper focus in social and emotional development. Um, and so I think we you know, have a strong awareness, and, and especially as we've, watched, um, as we've watched the last four years and the, ne the needs, those skills that are really needed um, to bridge communities and bridge people, these are the skill sets that are gonna make all the difference. So what can we do? Um, today we're gonna to be focused on three um, tools. One, it will be connect. The second is commit. And then I took the liberty to change the word courage to courage. It's gonna be a verb today. Um, so commit or connect, commit, and courage. 
Um, so bear with me as we change courage to a verb. We're going to start first with the video. Um, and this video comes out of uh, Amnesty International. Um, and it's going to be your first challenge. And it's going to be your challenge that you can wake up with tomorrow morning of being really intentional on how you connect with another human being. And I, and I would challenge you to connect with another human being that you may not know that well, that you may have curi curiosity about, that you may be in conflict with. Um, it could be somebody that you intersect with um, in a, your daily life, but you've never truly connected. Um, so we'll start with this video. Looking into her eyes, I was trying to see 
what I could tell from the life that she lived, and I think I could tell that there was a lot of experience lived there. It doesn't matter, look in the eyes or something, just uh, give yourself a chance to talk and to look at the other person. This is a powerful video and um, there are studies, brain imaging studies, um, that teach us that when people are shown pictures of people of a different race and they look at them long enough, it is possible for them to dampen their unconscious fear response. And these uh, studies and experiments reveal that we can change how we see and we know this intuitively right and in the post uh, experiment reflections participants say that when they see the other person as fully dimensional by wondering what they eat for dinner what they're afraid of what they dream about what their daily life is like um, they begin to replace fear anxiety and uncertainty with conscious thought and connection I want to read just a very brief passage from Valerie Carr see no stranger she says seeing no stranger is an act of will as I move through my day I start a simple practice now I come across faces on the street or subway or on a screen and I say in my mind sister brother sibling aunt uncle I start to wonder about each of them as a person when I do this, I am retraining my mind to see more and more kinds of people as part of us rather than them. I practice this with animals and parts of the earth too. I say in my mind, you are a part of me I do not yet know. And I practice orienting to the world with a sense of wonder, preparing myself for the possibility of genuine connection. So this is something that we hope that you do, lean into your discomfort because we do sometimes without realizing it turn away um, and uh, find ourselves um, not wanting uh, to be in the presence of difference and then i would also encourage you uh, after we had watched this video we were all broken up since we're all doing zoom um, you know non-stop every day all day uh, how do we build bridges um, across you know across the computer um, and so two things I would encourage you to do. One is to do a breakout with, with folks um, and ask them to sit for four minutes with eye contact um, with the person that they are broken out into. So it's, a, it's pairs um, and they connect with using eye contact uh, for four minutes. And it is one of the most powerful experiences I've personally ever gone through. Um, and the person that I was connected with um, we then had to, after that exercise, go back into our breakout rooms and share about a challenge we're currently experiencing. It could be a personal challenge, it could have been a professional challenge, um, because once we had made that four minute deep connection to then open that up to the conversations, he and I, uh, I would say four times a week, do check-ins now with each other. Um, it was an incredibly transformative experience. And, and as we experience um, the divisions uh, across the nation and in our communities, you know, how do we do that four minutes of real intentional connection? Um, and then I would also encourage you to do that with your partners, um, with your children, um, to, to deepen and strengthen those relationships. Um, so next, we'd like to challenge you to commit. Um, I think one thing we recognized in SEEDS is that uh, not only do our youth oftentimes um, not have opportunities to provide their voices, but that their voices are actually uh, some of the most powerful, um, some of the most transformative. They have some of the richest ideas. Um, they, see, they see things adults can't see. Um, they watch us. Uh, and so I wanted to share just this, this video about a request um, from our youth. There's so much struggle that our kids are going through. Kids don't have the attention even from their parents because they're so busy working. What's our, we're going to be in, in the future of our generation, like what are we going to do? How are we going to step up to the plate? We have the opportunity to help other human beings out. I, I kind of feel it's 
our responsibility. So. so I need to be more giving and I'll need to be disciplined to know what should be going on. Sometimes I feel like I need there to be an adult for me to be able to talk about it, you know, about sex and drugs. And I fear it because I don't know about it. Don't be afraid to take risks. It all starts with one person, really. One person can change the world. If you respect me, I will hear you. If you listen to me, I will feel understood. If you understand me, I will feel appreciated. If you appreciate me, I will know your support. If you support me, as I try new things, I will become responsible. When I am responsible, I will grow to be independent. In my independence, I will respect you and love you all of my life. And so I'll just say a couple of things, then I'll pass it on to Maya. You know, I think one thing we've really learned, especially as, as we've launched Youth Talk Back, um, which was launched in 2016 um, and or 17, and Girls Talk Back um, that was also recently launched, is um, providing those safe platforms where our our youth have opportunities to lead um, and collaborate and design and innovate. Is, is what is going to make all the difference. Um, they're adopting and they're um, inheriting uh, all of that, all that's out there right now. Um, and so, um, all you know, every single person on this call has an opportunity to be that one um, for a a child or a youth um, that needs you right now. And so, we're asking everyone to commit to find that child um, who needs that mentor um, and to be that champion. Maya. Yes, I, I want only to add that, um, you know, we um, very often are advocates and activists on behalf of children, and we think that that's enough. But too often, we are not really listening to young people as partners. And um, I'm guilty of this. We, I think many of us are, you know, we, we, uh, we are in a room, um, where we are making plans about, about education, about climate, about you know, the future that they will inherit, and yet we have no young people in the room with us. We have seen that um, partnership with young people, true partnership, real respect, um, and, and opportunities for them to have voice, not only um, improves their capacity to be um, active members of the community um, and stewards and, and um, leaders, but it also improves any endeavor um, uh, because they offer perspective, ingenuity, creativity um, that uh, is important and we need more intergenerational uh, duets. Perfect, and then finally we have a final video. There's so much um, focused on courage. Um, and so how do we courage? How do we model courage? Um, and we'll discuss in a minute. And it's really about how do we show up right now in this time of, of disconnect um, and um, be the upstander? How do we encourage others to be upstanders? And we'll discuss in a minute. How mad do you get when you see something wrong taking place? Let's take another look at what happens when our innocent bystanders reach the boiling point. Deep in the heart of Texas at this little roadside bakery, bigotry is being served with a coffee and bigotry. Is there any question? No, ma'am. We don't serve Muslims here. I'm sorry? This is America. We're at war with your people. I don't know what you think I am. I'm just trying to get an apple. Well, Excuse you're a terrorist is what you are. So Excuse me? you got to take your business elsewhere. We don't serve your kind here. The other customers at this bakery near Waco seem to hear everything, but they barely look at the Muslim woman, even when the language is tough to take. Get back on the camel and go back wherever you came from. Sir, I'm an American. I was born and raised no, in No, you're not. Country. Americans don't wear towels on their head. Muslim Americans say these are words they hear all the time in all parts of the country. But here at the bakery, what the customers don't know is that this Muslim woman and the man behind the counter are actors. The bakery is working with us, 
all part of a primetime hidden camera experiment on prejudice and patriotism. Please take your business elsewhere. Am I asking too much? When no one even tries to help her, she makes a direct appeal. Sir, would you mind ordering me an apple strudel? That's, that's why I'm here. Uh, I can give you the money. I have no problem. Uh, uh, please no, sir. Uh, I'm not going to let you go. But when he gives her the cold shoulder, she finally just leaves. You could have helped her out. You could have spoken up. Why not? Me speak up for her? Well, if he would try to do some harm to her or something, then I would have. But why not try to set him straight? I really think that a person that owns his own business should be able to say who they sell to. She's not American. Others seem to agree with our actor as to who's an American and am who's American. not. Is it all based on the way we look? I'm an American citizen. I just would like an apple strudel, please. Well, I'm sorry. Then why don't you dress like an American? You're this so is American. for religious purposes, sir. And I, I don't think you have any right to say anything. So I'm religious. I don't wear, you know, Halloween costumes around. I mean, am I wrong here, sir? Not me. I run no. my business the way I want to run. That's right. That's right. Don't put them in here with that skirt on. This customer is adamant that the man behind the counter is doing the right thing. <laughs> But the fact is, it's against the law to deny service to someone based on their race or religion. My name is John Quinones, and I'm with ABC News. What did you think of what you heard here? I didn't hear anything racist. He told her he wouldn't serve her. Well, he can say he wouldn't serve you if you come in here barefooted without a shirt on. But she wasn't barefoot or without a shirt on. Well, she wasn't dressed right. What do you mean? If I'd run her place, I'd do the same thing. You wouldn't let Muslims shop at your store? I sure wouldn't. We never expected customers to be so candid. How do I know you don't have a bomb in there? Watch what happens this time when, once again, our Muslim woman is denied service. This is not right. And again leaves. I mean, we reserve the right to not yeah, serve. That's right. That's right. That's, uh, you know, I, I appreciate saying that. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that. He not only commends the man behind the counter for his discriminatory behavior, but he gives them the thumbs up, not once, but twice. Good job. All right. Sure. As he Thank leaves. You. Can I talk to you, sir, for a second? But when I approach. Sir, where with ABC News? There is no thumbs up for me. We staged a little uh, experiment in there to see how people would react to uh, that kind of attitude. You know, I'm American. I am an American. <laughs> that man took it a bit farther, telling me I'm not an American. He was threatened. Jack DeVidio is a social psychologist at Yale University. So when we as Americans feel threatened from the outside, we're going to define ourselves in very rigid fashions. So either you're with me, and if you're not really one of me, then you must be somebody else who's against me. The young woman in our experiment is an actor. But for this woman, discrimination is all too real. Nahaya Javid helped us design our experiment. Although born in Chicago, she says she's constantly characterized by fellow Americans as the enemy. They always start off with, you're a terrorist, a Salma lover, towel head, camel jockey, on and on. While attending college in Texas, she says she continually suffered verbal abuse and has even been physically attacked just because she's Muslim. They assume I'm not from here, and if I tell them I'm American, they're like, no, you're not. Just because you were born here doesn't make you American. And I'm like, so what makes you American? It's a daily battle. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like living in America, I should have to fight this battle. Meanwhile, back at the bakery, our actor is at it again. But how do I know you're not a terrorist? Terrorists look like you. But this time, the customers are sympathizing with the Muslim woman. Right, I know, but can you blame me? Yeah, I can't blame you, actually. Why? What's the problem? All right, we'll get out of here. You need to go f*** up, actually. What do you need to do? Okay, sir. You, I'm sir. a good American, all right? We're at war with these people. Yeah, My dad's a better. Go f*** yourself. So is mine. And he's not the only one who walks out in anger. You need to stop segregating against people. It's wrong. Excuse me? She's an American. No, like you're a bad American. American. Time and again, people speak out with their pocketbooks. You hired a couple of customers, just so you know. But look what happens when this man threatens to leave. You're not a good American, sir. I uh, believe I am a good American. My son just came back from serving in the Army for over a year in Iraq, and that has nothing to do with her rut. I understand that, and I hear what you're saying, but I, 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 can't, I can't believe you would, you would be so discriminatory. 
I'm deeply offended by that. I, I'm sorry to offend you, sir, but I've got to live with myself. Seething, the man vows to fight back. I will let people know this. I've stopped here every time I've come by this place, and I'll never stop here again. Why did folks get so upset? They saw an injustice. It's justice that binds us together. It's justice that makes us a society. Any threat to that kind of sense of justice and fairness undermines the entire system. No, no, I'm not. Perhaps that's why more customers are outraged by our actors' hateful behavior than approve of it. You're not dressed like an American. I don't but know no one is more persistent than these two young women who can't believe what they're hearing. Take your jihad, take it back out of the parking lot. Excuse me? I mean, I gotta protect my customers, okay? You're really offensive and disgusting. Well, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to protect Thank you. you here. Thank because you. Because You're you sick. Like that doesn't mean anything. This is a How do you know? culture. You These so people are trying to kill Americans. She is my culture. So you're ready to serve me, but you're not ready to serve her. You're obviously dressed like an American. Big deal. She's Muslim. Obviously. And unlike the others, they don't just leave in anger. They stand their ground. So you're going to regulate what people wear? Yes, because I believe the, the degree manager? of... No, I'm not the manager. Well, can I speak to your manager? I'm John Quinones with ABC News. It's only when we catch up with our heroines that they finally let their guards down. I'm with my friend who's, you know, Muslim and it's, yeah, I've just seen um, how people treat them differently. And it really hurts me. Just watching them stand up for what they believe in touches Professor DeVidio. In a way, they defended America. And I was impressed by that because they wanted this to be a just society, a just place, a just victory. I'm trying to hear this. And remember this man whose son served in Iraq? He's also moved to tears. And every person deserves to be treated with uh, respect and dignity, no matter in every situation, no matter how they're dressed. Never have we seen reactions so polarized, from a thumbs up for prejudice to an emphatic Thumbs down. Go Two different Americans, both convinced they're patriotic. At the end of the day, 13 people stood up for the Muslim woman, while six sided with the clerk. But the majority of the bystanders, 22, did or said absolutely nothing. That's what's most frightening to Muslims like Nahaya, who was watching our experiment. In fact, so frightening that they often avoid going out by themselves. It's really sad because I'm old enough to be able to do things by myself. I shouldn't need a chaperone all the time. But that one time that I'm alone and something bad might happen, I'd rather be safe than sorry. I am it's no wonder this young woman was so moved by the people who came forward to protect a stranger who just happens to be Muslim. Thank you so much for what you did, and I wish more people would do these types of things, and um, it would make my life a lot easier. <laughs> The reason I, I like this piece so much is because it shows us many different ways to be an upstander. Um, you see the person who says F you, who walks out. You see the person who um, says that they're going to um, not patronize that place and so they're going to boycott and try to um, change things through um, economic persuasion. You see those who um, demanded to speak to the manager, you see those who try to tell a story, who to persuade, who simply offered comfort uh, to the girl. You know, there's multiple ways to participate and to choose um, to step up and in. And um, I think that obviously we want to raise young people who have the courage um, to be upstanders and to impact their community. And we don't want them to be one of the 22 who do and say nothing. Um, that being said, we, you know, there are so many things that we can have young people do today and so many things that they show us that they can do whether it's blogging or vlogging or using social media you know and TikTok, or you know whether it's uh, self-publication whether it's um 
you know, there, there are myriad ways to be involved and they don't need to um, necessarily enter the fire. Um, we need to think creatively about how to engage in the work of moral courage. And we need to think of courage as a long road. Um, it is not simply about jumping in um, and um, being loud. Um, it is also about using our artistry. It is about using tools, resources, networks, relationships, um, persuasion, critical thinking. And so we, we have to think of courage as a long road that we all walk down. We, we are facing a long road ahead in terms of healing and wellness in our world. And uh, we may not know where we're gonna end up exactly or where we're gonna get our next um, drink or meal. And we have to uh, persist and keep walking down that road um, and, uh, and hope that uh, others will, uh, will join alongside us. But um, I, was, uh, I was very moved by, um, by the different kinds of courage there. Beautifully shared, thank you, Maya. Um, and I, I want to share, so that here, here again are the, the asks uh, that we all connect, that we all commit, and that we all courage um, as we move forward. And, and I, I want to finish with a, a video and provide a little bit of time for some, some comments. Um, we always end with Kid President, um, and we will continue to end with Kid President. Uh, he's one of our heroes um, and leaves us a, a beautiful message. There's a lot that the kids need to know. A letter to a person on their first day here. Today, over 360,000 babies will be born, and you are one of them. Welcome, this is the world. It's a pretty cool place. There's lots to see, smell, there's corn dogs. Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. There's just so much to do. Singing, dancing, oh, and laughing. <laughs> Laughing's the best. It's best when it's gray when, when you laugh, milk comes out of your nose. But well, only if you just have milk. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just gross. Some days, gross things will happen. Some days, awesome things will happen. Some days, you'll get ice cream. Some days, you won't. Some days, you kind of fly high. Some days, you get stuck in the tree. It's just how it is here. There's plenty of reasons to dance. Just gotta look for them. Don't worry though, you won't be doing this alone. You're going to meet lots of people here. Some of them will be really nice, and some won't be. It's not that they can't be, it's just, maybe they're just having a bad day. Being a person is hard sometimes. You should give people high fives just for getting out of bed. Oh, high fives, I forgot to explain that. How do I explain this? Um, it's kind of, high fives are like hitting someone who is in front. Uh, that's really bad. Just treat everybody like it's their birthday. Even if they don't deserve it, because we all mess up sometimes. The biggest mess up, not forgiving each other's mess ups. Maybe you'll be a teacher. Maybe you'll be president. Maybe you'll cure every disease ever. You might even see the Grand Canyon swimming the ocean. Oh, this is so, so much. Yeah, it's a lot. Try let's take a breath. Isn't that amazing? It's called breathing. You're going to do it a lot. Nobody knows exactly how much, so enjoy it. Pay attention, take brain pictures. Because amazing things will happen every day. You're gonna do so much, but it's not about what you do, it's about who you are. You, you're awesome, you're made that way. You're made from love, to be love, to spread love. Love is always loud, no matter what. Even if hate has a cool one, love is loud. So let your fight be loud. Let's shout to the world. Things can be better. It's okay about all the mess ups. We're not drool. I'm sorry, I'll just keep bringing that up. I don't think I told you just yet. I'm really glad you're here. We don't say that enough to each other here because, well, life gets busy. You're gonna be important and you're gonna do a lot. And you're gonna smell great, but don't get too busy. Remember to let everybody know you're glad you're here. You don't have to remember all this right now. You might need a pep talk sometimes, but that's okay. For now, remember this. You're awake. You're awesome. Live like it. You know the...
I'm not the only kid president, I'm also an uncle. We made this for a special little guy named Miles. I'm trying really hard to teach him to be a person, an awesome person. Pass this video along. What do you think the kids need to know? Help me out, I'm making a list. Do you make YouTube videos? Make a video. Draw a picture, write about it. Tell me and the world. Everybody can have someone younger than them and they should be teaching them awesome stuff. Grown ups, it might be a little scary, but it's true. Kids are learning to be people by watching you, for real. Now if you excuse me, I've got some dancing to do. <laughs> I, he, he is truly lovable and he reminds us, you know, as he's shouting out, we can do better, but it's okay about all the mess ups, you know, this notion of, you know, letting joy in along with, um, you know, that act of, of forgiveness and reimagining um, that creativity, that joy is a practice that will sustain um, all of the other hard work. And so let us all look up at the sky, but also look at one another so that we can find the courage to, you know, keep walking down that long road. Um, thank you. Um, I, I really want to emphasize that, you know, the, the work of Seeds before I hand it over is, it is about positive peace building. So it's not just about not having conflict. It is about true participation that works to resolve inequity and injustice in nonviolent ways. It's about transforming our cultures, organizations, um, educational institutions, pedagogical processes, um, and ourselves, like that compassionate bridge building and relationships, the grassroots diplomacy that all of us can do, and the community source solutions that we can find um, to make um, person and policy better. So thank you. I hand it over to, to you now, Scott. Awesome. Thank you so much, Maya and Terry. You know, we are running over time, but what the heck? Let's just, let's do one question. Is that okay? Um, and for, we, we are moving on to a, a smaller group action planning process after this. So for those of you who are on this call, um, who plan to be in the next part, just, yeah, we're going to have to push that back a couple minutes so we can hear Maya and Carrie finish. Um, but this is a really interesting question I'd like to ask Maya and Carrie to maybe answer with a couple of sentences. It's a big one. How can we deconstruct our education systems to create socially just and equitable systems that are authentically inclusive, safe spaces for all students? One sentence. Go. No, just joking. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Try your best. I mean, I think that here in Hawaii, there's so much good that is happening with place-based, culturally responsive education that reconnects people to language and to community. I think portfolio-based and INA-based education, project-based education. I think education that um, builds those bridges that we're talking about um, between um, school, community, and ohana. I think that um, education that is about action plan development like we're doing that looks at backward mapping that involves envisioning our beloved community that harvests and preparing the soil, pulling the weeds, removing the barriers, and planting seeds and watering them and nurturing them to sustain and having that sort of long, long-term vision. I want to give Carrie an opportunity. She has a lot of uh, to say on this. Yeah, I think three things. One is uh, pre preparing our teachers to have confidence in hosting difficult conversations on topics that matter um, for, for our children. I think it's, it's hard to do and it requires skills and I'm not sure that everyone's confident in doing that. Um, second is restorative practice. Every single school should have restorative practice um, embedded. Um, and then the third for me is, um, is the action plan, Scott, that, that our Girls Talk Back, I think it was Girls Talk Back that came out of on, on flipping how we um, provide space. You know, it was the, um, the, the team that flipped the student council uh, conversation to, it wasn't called student council. What was it called? Woke council. I'm blanking right now. Yeah, woke students, something. students stay woke. Students stay woke. Um, yeah. And in promoting, right, kind of flipping the, the narrative on what we mean by leadership. And, and so I think there's a lot of opportunity in this space. So thank you for that question. Okay, thank you so much, Carrie and Maya. Um, yeah, mahalo just for these wonderful words and ways of thinking which I think we can all reflect on during these challenging times. I'm just so grateful for the both of you. 
um, you know, just before the webinar, Carrie said something that really hit me. So I just wanted to share. She told me that today is a great day for my daughter. I have a three-year-old daughter. And, you know, of course, part of it has to do with the fact that our political future is looking a little bit different as of today. But I think even a bigger part of it has to do with the fact that she has this valuable opportunity to grow up in a community led by each and every one of you, right? And like Maya said, you are all peace building leaders. You are all going to take action to connect with someone who disagrees with you, to be a mentor, to be an upstander. They're all very important parts of this process to build the beloved community um, that we want our next generation to live in. So thank you so much for that insight and um, for your personal mentorship. And just thank you all for being a part of this.